Okay, let's get this going. And go. Party people! Ah! I had to get y'all so special for episode <laughs> 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 Welcome to episode 50 of the Black Delegates Podcast. Paul W. Fronting like you ain't like Whoop There It Is. Everybody loves it. It's a famous song. It's a classic. So, who I got on the line with me today is Ishmael Ghetto Phenom. What's good, man? What's cracking? What's cracking? And the brother that you see Tootsie rolling in the background with the short shorts on and the two socks with the stripes. Is our very own Paul boxing on top. <laughs> the neon tube, uh, 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 tube top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's up? And I am the Black Lion. I just want to bring. All right, man. Turn it down because we can't hear a word you're saying. Classic. <laughs> it's right. Classic. Jesus it's Christ. Classic. No, I just been I, that song just been on my mind lately for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> we, we know that's in your shuffle on on, on autoplay yeah. every day. Right. <laughs> heavy, heavy rotation. Hey, if everybody listens to that song every day, the world will be a better place. Guarantee it. Word. Be a so much today's date. Place. <laughs> Probably. My today's folks. date is February the 11th, 2019. Like I said, episode 50. So we made it, y'all. 50. 50. When you, some of y'all haters didn't think we could do it. <laughs> probably Jonathan. Jonathan been hating. He's probably like, y'all won't get to episode 25. I'm sure he was saying something like that. But nah, Jonathan been very supportive. Uh, how y'all feel about 50 episodes? I feel good. Feels good, man. Yeah, Dude, a really. year in, we're getting better. It's just Dude, getting you better. Really. G -g 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 unit. Okay. You, none of y'all finna, finna quit on me. Nah, Do man. I need we a replacement. We would have been done that. <laughs> good, man. <laughs> it's G coming back. I don't know. I'm about to. Uh, <laughs> see, now we're getting into the, the next year. It might be time to renegotiate the contract. You know what I'm saying? I might demand a trade. I mm. might go AD on you, hold out. Sign with Clutch. We'll we have to see. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you do, don't sign with Clutch. Some kind of way you be moving, <laughs> moving to L.A. to carry LeBron's bags or something. Yeah, come Be his LeBron. personal writer. Not a bad gig, actually. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'd do it. So, this week... Uh, how was y'all week this week? Uh, let's start with who I start with last week. Let's start with Paul. Paul, how was your week in Brownness? I'm gonna keep it short because my week was 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 super trash and didn't do anything special. Uh, just hung out with the family, you know. Uh, went downtown a little bit, kind of hung around. The weather was beautiful. And what else did I do? Oh, I ran a lot. I, I did. I've been trying to trying to get back into my New Year's resolutions. So uh, so trying to run a lot. So I think I ran like eight miles this weekend or whatever like that over two days so so i'm tired and that's about it man that's all i did man just boring stuff man just just chill with the family man nothing special what's your actual uh new year's resolution uh my news resolution was to just it's always the same thing man is your news resolution anything different it's always like save more money work out more you know eat eat healthier all that stuff like that and of course by i'm sure usually by now it's already broken down but Try to stay on this running thing, especially since the weather's been nice. So, just doing that, man. Nothing special. Gotcha, gotcha. How about you, Ishmael? How was your week? Yeah, my week was solid, man. Not too, uh, not too much going on. Uh, what was that? Sunday had a big ice uh, storm here, basically. So, I was in the house all day Sunday. Uh, yeah. Saturday, ended up going out to the art museum. They had this uh, black artist, Kahende Wiley. Um, and this that was the last weekend of his art show, so got to go out there and get a little black culture in, and it's crazy because the art museum was like packed, or at least his exhibit was packed. We walking mm -hmm. through all these other, you know, portraits and sculptures and this and that, and nobody's really in there. One or two people in there, and you get to the Kehinde Wiley section, and I mean it's just it's like the club up in there. I mean it's just people walking around everywhere, so was good to see. I hadn't been to the art museum in a long time, so it was good to go out there and see that. Um, but basically, otherwise, it's been it's been pretty low key. Um, I am in a situation a little similar to Paul. You know, this past week I started trying to work back out, trying to get to the gym, and so by the time we record next week, I will have done something. Or I will have started something uh -huh. 
that I never thought I would start. Start it. Okay. Decided. Yoga. Yoga. Not yoga. The next week, actually Monday is going to be the day, I'm going to try 21 days on a vegetarian type of diet. Oh, so, what is wrong with you? And I'm, not going, I'm not going that way. I'm not trying to transition to become a vegetarian, but I feel like I just need to kickstart this healthier eating. I really don't eat enough vegetables. I don't eat enough fruits. All I be eating is meat, just hamburger and, and pizza and, all, you know, just everything bad Ch- chicken talk about chicken I don't know time. man I, I've seen so. your wife putting the plates on uh, fa- Facebook man it's a lot of asparagus a lot of asparagus spears yeah it's you gotta be eating asparagus. some vegetables unless you're not oh, eating man. the sheet. honestly I'm the one that cooks the asparagus and I haven't cooked asparagus in a while oh so. man oh, sure. remind me never to go in their restroom ever I'm never going to the, 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 ish, the ish household the household I know what it smells like up in there it always looked like a balanced meal man whenever she posts some food on Facebook it always looked like a balanced meal you yeah. know in no, small when- portions I'd be like oh now, whenever you know? she cooks, she does make sure that she puts some vegetables in there. But, you know, just in the day-to-day fast life, if she's working late or if I'm working late or whatever, it's like a lot of fast food or yeah. a lot of just quick meals or whatever. So I know I'm eating. I, my diet is not great. Uh, so I said I, I want to try to know people who've done it for a month or whatever and said that they felt all this energy, yada, yada. So I said, all right, I said I'm going to do it. I'm going to try 21 days. I don't know if I can make it 30. So I'm going to try 21 days. I'm going to start on Monday to give me time this week to kind of plan, figure out what the heck I'm doing because I really don't know anything about vegetarian life except that they don't eat meat. So I'm going to try to figure gonna, that you're out. You're going to get a lot of carbs, though, man. You're going you're gonna, to notice it pretty quick. <laughs> Why you say that? Because you because what you're, you're, you're extra, your, your current diet, and it's all meat, so that's like lean. It's like no carbs. And then now you're gonna to go to veggies, which is all car- a lot of carbs, uh, oh, yeah. fruits, and, and so and, I mean, and so it's, it's so like a lot of people when they're trying to like, and you're not trying to lose weight necessarily, but if you're trying to lose weight, like you'll notice like you'll be fuller, your your face, your your skin will, you know, I mean that's what that's what that's what a lot of people the the new diets is all no carbs, so they're all going all meat, and so this you know the the vegan is basically the opposite of that, which I think that's why, also why a lot of people don't st- stick with it because they because the carb the carb intake. Yeah, and I eat carbs now because I eat a lot of sandwiches. So if right. I'm eating hamburgers, it's on the bun, or if right, I'm eating, right. you know, whatever, it's a biscuit with it. So I eat carbs now. But yeah, I just like I said, I'm just trying to get get a little healthier stuff going through the system. So we're gonna try it out, see see what it do. Right. So what sounds about you, good. Ryan? Sounds good. Uh, my week pretty uneventful too, man. I'm, I'm gonna say uh, it was a it was a whole lot of TV just because of the weather lately, man. It was it was real real cold and rainy and like you said the the ice storm uh sunday morning uh i'm gonna have to holler at uh, minister russell to give you some tips man because uh <laughs> they just got off a of fast all liquids for how all long liquid yeah, fast. can't do that i'm not built for 40 that. days oh i'm not built for that now they had a they had a couple little uh like cheat cheat items in order to survive like they could eat eggs but that was it okay but it, it was um, it was all other, it was 24 hours it other than like, that everything had to have had to be able to be made into a liquid but it wasn't like sun up it was sun up to sundown and then after that you good or was man no man 24 all 24 7 man yeah i mean everything I how they can did. be made into a liquid you know i no, pull out no. the little ninja blender no not that like that no you couldn't blend that. nothing no you couldn't <laughs> blend anything it's not like that it had to have be like melted right into gotcha. a liquid like then you can eat it yeah, gotcha. And I, I've done that for like a couple of days here and there because I fast usually each day is something different, man. But I couldn't imagine going forty days on a liquid diet. That's crazy. How much more? Uh, how much weight? Yeah, he lose? made it. He made man. He was he was looking kind of slender. <laughs> what I saw him last Sunday, uh, not, not last Sunday, but Sunday before last. Uh, yeah, he looked like he probably he probably done lost twenty pounds. Uh, I ask him next time I see him, but yeah, man, he's looking pretty hey, slim. Shouts to that man. I can't. I, I don't think I could. I don't think I could do that. Right. Yeah, I couldn't imagine. Yeah, I've yeah, never done any type of fast. The only diet I did was low carb, uh, low sugar a couple years ago. Um, but that's it. So I'm going into this brand new. But didn't yeah. mean to cut you off. What was you about to say? Yeah, I was just going to say other than that, man, it's just a, a lot of, uh, like I said, it was a lot of TV watching. I didn't feel like uh, going in the basement or going in the living room. I just wanted to lay in the bed and relax. So I ended up having to watch the stuff that the wife watched. Watch anything so, good? Uh, got, 
God, what you see? Come on now. Come on. Nothing. I said what the wife watched. So that, yeah. that would mean no, <laughs> Real it wasn't Housewives. good. You watch Real Housewives. But actually, uh, nah, it wasn't that bad. Uh, she was watching like Saturday, the the rap game was on. Oh, that Jermaine, Jermaine Dupri, Dupri show yeah, where he okay. got the little kids on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so Jermaine's still out here looking for the next little kid star. Uh, so that was kind of cool just because, you know, if you like rap, you like rap. It's okay. But those little kids, they're little kids. I don't know why he really expect them to be 16 and be professionals. Like, they, they most of the time haven't been doing nothing but rapping on YouTube, you know, with their uncle or their daddy or something. But, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting show, man. I still like it. He had them doing a lot of exercising, which is weird. He got little little tricks and stuff they doing now. They trying to make the show like a regular reality show. But uh, other than that, uh, Young Trenton had a uh, basketball practice again on Saturday. Uh, you, you turn into sports so, dad. You start. You turn into Lavar Ball yeah, man. Jr. Yeah, man. And it's it's eight thirty in the morning Saturday morning practices. Good. Uh, they didn't missed a couple days because of the weather, um, and holidays, et cetera, et cetera. So um, you know they back at it now. Uh, I will say, Ish, this is one thing you would be proud of. Trenton's uh, 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 air dribbling game, fire. When he don't have a ball in his hand and he just pretending like he dribbling, <laughs> dog, like he look like he got handles. He like, so he, I'm thinking this could translate. He, he, I'm feeling good about it. He like, uh, he, like the, he like the homie from the five heartbeats up on the roof in uh, above the rim. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he cold, man. He just, I mean, he be watching some games with me here and there, so he kind of know. But, you know, most of the time you can tell the people can't dribble when the air dribbles is whack. But Trim's air dribbles is nice. nice. He got the air handles. He got air <laughs> So he, he, he working, on the, working on dribbling the ball. He getting a little bit better, man. He, he dribbled all the way down the court quite a few times now, so we'll, we'll see. Handling the ball and it all falls apart, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, Paul, how long do you think before – the Black Ryan gets ejected from a game for being irate with a ref. Oh man, look, hey, can we can we can I put this bet, bet down in hours, not not days, but hours? <laughs> <laughs> Never. What who you think I am? G? That's G. No, part. Ryan. I'm not, look, I'm not look, one of yo, like that. Yo, ish, real talk. Ryan is is, is prototypical sports dad, LeVar Ball, whatever you want to call it. He's, he's, just, <laughs> he's just been waiting to come out. He's been waiting for this day for for years right. now. He's been playing in this since high school, is college. Hero. Right. He's been waiting to have a son yeah, so he could do it so, so he could teach him everything he, he claims he knows about basketball. And then, <laughs> and then he's going to and, he, and I've seen Ryan get up, get upset on t, at TV enough just watching games. Like I know he's going to get upset at some ref, some coach not doing things right. It's it's going to happen. It's inevitable. Right. Nah, because you can't you can't get upset at the kids. Look, you just can't. Look, I mean, they don't no, you ain't going to get upset at the kids, but you're going to get upset at the grown adult that's on the court with the kids. That's what you're going to do. <laughs> that and then and then eventually what, what Ron's gonna do he's gonna do the the, the 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 mistake a lot of parents make is they decide like well I'll just coach the team right I'm a coach and then, <laughs> and then he becomes that dude that the dude that hey, like, I would his, coach the, like team. the dude where his son is always the, is the star and then it it, is, it becomes a Levar Ball situation it becomes a Levar Ball it's always the other kids the other kids fault the other coaches fault it's never <laughs> never the kids fault Ryan gonna be no. the first coach in history. To rock goggles while coaching the rec specs. That's right. Word. Right. <laughs> I would. I would definitely wear a head and a headband. See, that's what you should have said. I would wear the headband <laughs> on the sideline, not the goggles though. Got to wear the glasses. Yeah, just, just wait. Just, in a few weeks, like I guarantee, whatever, like little, 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 you know, church, uh, church court they're playing on, like there'll, there'll be a big old picture of Ryan on the front, like "Do not admit <laughs> injected <laughs> three week suspension." Hey, I'm gonna be. I will be hard on him though, and when it's time and he actually serious about it, I'm gonna be hard on him. Like that's just what I am. Like you got to put in the work, man, if you want to do it. But until he's serious about it, I'll leave him alone. He said he want to dribble. He came downstairs and dribbled a couple times by himself. So I was like, yeah, if you want to dribble, go on in the basement and dribble. And he's like, why don't you come down? I'm like, nah, that's something you gotta do by yourself. And he came on down here, so he getting serious. Mm -hmm. And he, he said, I told him when he when he able to dribble, then I'll come down here and start playing with him. I'm telling you, it's going to be just like. Because you know, Pops, Pops still got the handles. I ain't got the endurance, but my handles still. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I need proof. I got enough handles for a little kid, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man. Uh, you know, ripping him. Look, Ryan going to be playing his little boy just like uh, Denzel and Ray Allen. And <laughs> he got right. game, man. Yep. Just out there to stick yeah. out. <laughs> I give Trenton to about eight before he start beating his daddy. Oh. Well, I don't know, man. Let, got, Ryan got, Ryan got some no size on. Time. Ryan, you know, Ryan gonna use that body. He gonna, he gonna go full Rasheed nah, Wallace I ain't gonna on cheat, him. man. You gotta, you gotta shoot some jumpers. You can't be posting up little kids. That's not cool. <laughs>
That's what you're supposed to do, uh, man. You're supposed to dominate him. Like, let him know your authority, man. That's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> what are you talking about? Only when he gets good enough, then yes. <laughs> then you do what you got to do. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. Let's get into these topics, right, man. Come yeah, on. Let's slide into let's topics, to I forgot. Man. I forgot we was on a podcast. Uh, Again. We still got to do a <laughs> podcast. Uh, you want me to leave this off? The intros. No, nah, you wanted to talk about it. Go ahead. Intro. Yeah, man. So let, we're just going to do a quick shout out to the uh, 15-year anniversary of the greatest, and I do mean greatest, uh, uh, TV moment in my life. I can't say what, what the other black delegates think, but uh, the Rick James skit from The Chappelle Show premiered 15, <laughs> ye- 15 years ago today, or somewhere close to that. Exactly I today. Believe. Yeah, oh, okay. exactly today. So, so we just want to talk about real quick. You know, First of all, did y'all enjoy it? Do y'all still think it holds up? What, what, what do y'all think? Oh yeah, Chappelle don't sh- sir, yeah, Chappelle's show definitely holds up. I mean, that's one of the classic TV shows, the classic sketch comedies of all time. So yeah, I, I definitely think it holds up. Yeah, yeah, it still holds up. I mean, I've gone back and, and watched it on uh, Netflix a, a couple times here and there. Um, yeah, still funny to me. I'm I'm a fan. Man, I remember it the, took I remember me a while to get time. into it. I remember back in the day. No, I was I was on it all early and often. I kept telling my wife like, "Yo, this dude's gonna, this dude's hilarious." Cause I've seen him before on like little things, little movies, little parts. It's like, "Yo, this." Uh, and so when the show came out, I was like, "I'm all in." And then I can't remember if it was like season one or season two in the Rick James. I guess it was season two in the Rick James hit. But I was watching that like religiously, like every it was you know a premiere night. I'd watch every single episode. And when the Rick James went on, came on, like, "Yo, man." I, I remember I just was dying laughing in my apartment. I was like, yo, man. I, I kept calling my wife, like, you know, girlfriend at the time and calling her. And it's like, you got to put it on here. Put, put it on. Put it on. You know, put it on the uh, Comedy Central. So she was like, what are you talking about? And it just wouldn't stop. The whole skit just kept getting funnier and funnier and funnier. And I was like, yo, call her up. Put it on. <laughs> and so she was like, oh, okay, this is really funny. Then the next day at work, all I, I just kept saying all the lines. I was that annoying dude. Just kept saying the lines over and over <laughs> again at work. And all, the, and all the old white people were like, what is he talking about? Because I was saying... <laughs> Rick James now, bitch. now, what's your favorite line from that episode? Oh, for without a doubt, it's in my Twitter bio. Uh, habitual line stepper. When when my man says Rick James uh, stepped over line hab- uh, habitually, he's a habitual line stepper. That's my favorite line <laughs> from it. Gotcha, gotcha. It's really, it's, it's great. It's crazy because it it lasted like the entire episode. Like the, pretty much all thirty minutes was just that one skit, and it was the whole thing was great. And, and the, to have Rick James actually in there co-signing all of it was made it even funnier. Right, that was that was the best part yeah. of the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then anyway, we just want to give a shout out to to Rick James skit. Still the funny, it's still literally the funniest thing I've ever seen on TV to this day. I've never laughed harder in thirty minutes in my entire life, and I can watch that skit over. I don't over know. Again. I'm I might have laughed more at the Prince episode. Oh no, yeah, that's, no, that's no, probably my Prince favorite. Episode. Yeah. No, that Prince there episode was there two. Was hilarious. Hold on. Was one and no, two. or um Wayne Brady. I like no, Wayne Brady. Yeah, no, Wayne Brady it, was good, but I the, feel the, like the it's Prince, underrated now, like the Wayne Brady one. No, the, look, those are all, all both good. The, the Prince was, I, I thought it was all right, but the, the, the Wayne Bray was better than the Prince to me. And then, but the Rick James is, is nothing's close to that man. Nothing was close to that. I, I died laughing at that one. Yeah, my my favorite line. I can't say it because we're a family friendly podcast, but I kind of paraphrase is when he said. I wish I had two more hands <laughs> so yes. I could give you four thumbs down. Like, that is the <laughs> best line out of that episode to me. So, yeah, shout out to Dave Chappelle. And yeah. real talk, I wasn't even a huge Dave Chappelle fan before the Chappelle I show. Like, I had seen yep. some of his stand-up and stuff like that, and I was like, yeah, all right. It but wasn't he that wasn't, funny, right? Yeah, he oh, wasn't man. that funny. Well, you, t- you tripping Kill Me Softly was dope. Hit. It wasn't, man. No, yeah. Kill Me Softly So he had the one was. movie. He had the one movie. It was it was fine. Half baked was fine. You, but see, it was but funny. Ryan, you weren't of that culture. You but it wasn't culture, it wasn't man. like it wasn't like oh I gotta run and see what Chappelle was doing. It wasn't like that. Dog, right. And I don't think it was like that for anybody. Dog, you tripping? I got like and that's I got where, like that's why I wasn't DVDs paying attention to it. I was like, why now. he got a show? Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't see it, man. But yeah, funny. One of the funniest shows. Ever. Yeah, I think I got on it because I was heavy on the Boondocks, and I think you know they were. Either promoing, I don't remember if they came on after each other, but they were promoing them back to back or whatever. And so I just kind of started watching it from the beginning too. But yeah, like I said, classic show. And yeah, and it had and had great hip hop on it too, man. I mean, like real hip hop yeah, at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, we had. I mean, you had some real. Yeah, like Young Kanye, Talib, all kinds of dudes, man. I mean, just anyway. I, yeah, I wish they bring that show back. I, I mean, it never will happen again. I don't think, but great show. And the best kid. At this point, he's a he a mercenary. If they give him enough money, it just it'll just be on his own schedule. 
So he will probably do a Netflix joint. He's already, he's been doing Netflix joints. He got like three. He got like no, but I mean oh yeah, show, but that's standing. That's yeah, not yeah. or sit down. He's sitting down. He he's standing up probably in most of. But yeah, he I mean a skit skit form. That's what we want from him. I mean he's still funny. He's still funny in general, but his skits are, are really where he's where he's uh, right. really his, at his yeah. best. He need to bring back a collab, bring back and live in color in the Chappelle show. Put him in the one. All those dudes said that they wouldn't work with him no more though, but I think they would if they saw the check. Well, he, he's he's homies with the, the his writing partner Neil Brennan, who was like the co-creator. That's the white yeah, dude. That's, they, they, they broke. They, okay. they they had a falling out for a while. Because white dude said he wouldn't work with him. That no was more. back then, but they they they're back. They're they've patched everything back up, and so they're cool now. So they hang out and everything like that. But I don't know if they're gonna collaborate on this together. But you know, all that's resolved, I guess. Yeah, shout out to All Shabu. right, so now let's get into some racism. Right. <laughs> let's bring the mood down. Bread and butter. Let's bring the mood down. Start off happy. Let's Bread go into some butter, sad baby. stuff. It's the black delegates. All right, so we got we got hit hit last week. Everybody heard the uh, Gucci blackface sweaters or saw them. Um, that was all the all the news. Uh, white people are at it again. Certain white people. Did you say all the news? People. All the <laughs> in the news. I haven't crossed over yet, uh, but yeah. So if you've seen the pictures of the Gucci blackface sweaters, you see how ridiculous they are. Uh, you see how there is no possible way one could look at that and say, "Hey, this isn't racist at all. This is just fashion." So once again, like I keep telling y'all, conspiracy. White people are out here leaving little breadcrumbs to say, "Hey, we're racist and we're here." So real quick, y'all saw the blackface stuff. What y'all think? Was it just a fashion faux pas, or did they know what they were doing? Paul, you gonna go oh, first? Oh man, because I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a, you know, like I, I get it, but like I don't know, man. Like first of all, nobody's buying that man. That looks, it looks ridiculous, man. Nobody. <laughs> you should be shamed for wearing it, but regardless but yeah i guess i guess it's a it, it definitely when i mean all these things are kind of like through the lens of okay the articles have been written for you so yeah when i look at it like yeah it's a little insensitive it or it isn't it's in insensitive i i would say but like man i don't i, I don't i don't know what their reason behind it I, personally i would never buy that i think i think we probably caused more attention to be on gucci for this the thing because like nobody was like nobody was gonna buy this thing i, I think i don't think anybody's gonna buy it now uh, but it just it just gets their name out there more and causes controversy, which is I, in some ways I think that's what some of this, these people want, man, controversy. I don't know, man. I think when you look at high fashion, people with money wear some weird stuff, bro. Like, yeah, I'm sure people were buying that mug or people were gonna be buying it. Um, but just I agree. It's Gucci. Right, just because it's Gucci, you stick a Gucci tag on anything and people will buy it. You put a it don't even matter. You, I got this, uh, like sound foam, acoustic foam. You put a Gucci sign on this acoustic foam. Somebody will wear it as a sweatshirt. You know, it don't even <laughs> matter. But um, and, and I think it's pretty much universally been panned. So I'm not gonna go into it too much. That yeah, it was racist. It was ridiculous. Everybody is in agreement of that. I don't know what Gucci is thinking. I mean, I feel like it's just one of those situations where the designers thought it was funny like i'm sure they they knew where that came from that that it wasn't like it was a mistake like oh we didn't have any idea they knew where that came from they figured poor people ain't buying this it doesn't matter anyway it's going to be cool but where i want to look at this from because like i said so many people are just going to get into gucci because it's a premier label luxury label so you got dudes like Soldier Boy, who got a Gucci uh, logo tattooed right on the middle of his forehead, <laughs> like right in between his eyes. Basically, he got a Gucci logo. So now this fool is like, he's about to get it removed from his face. He got to remove the Gucci logo from his face. Oh, so he said he would because okay. now they racist. Yeah, and he talking about he gonna donate all his Gucci clothes to. People who need clothing just, or retail. Why, why would you donate it? Just, just burn it. Just burn it. That's what the right wingers do. Do nothing, man. Come on, <laughs> this dude ain't doing nothing. A true conservative would just burn it. <laughs> don't donate it to somebody. Come on, man. So yeah, that's that's why I don't get brands. People get all these weird tattoos. I have a tattoo, 
but it's something meaningful to me. I'm not just getting a random. I'm not getting a Nike logo, you know. Tommy like Nike, I wear <laughs> Nike. I'm not getting it. We done talked about it before. You know, you People can... have logos. Stuff go out of style. Twenty years later, that stuff right. look dated, and you look stupid. Look so stupid. now you got a Gucci, right. Gucci logo on your forehead, and you got to pay. What's tattoo removal costs, Ooh. especially for a celebrity who wanted it done right? right? At least three, four times what the tattoo costs. No, it ain't. Yeah, right. three, four times what the tattoo costs, probably. And it hurts like hell, for, for real, for real. And, and then what about Gucci person. Mane? Is he going to change his name? Is he still going to be Gucci Mane? So wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought that's who we was talking about. Who you say? Soldier no, Boy. No, I was talking about uh, Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy. Oh, okay. Man, Sorry. nobody listens to Sol- Soldier Boy. <laughs> nobody listens to Soldier <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Hey, Soldier Boy is more influential than we all thought. Right. But we could talk about that another that time. That man needs to get off that lean, all that's right. all I can tell you. So one thing one thing that I will complain about in this situation is it, it kind of sheds light on something that I believe black people do too often. Too often are we going out and supporting brands uh, and uh, by naming ourselves Gucci Mane, having uh, right. uh, Nike Air Force One songs, or making cool stuff, or making stuff cool before you got paid for it. Now I don't know if if uh if Nelly got paid for the Air Force One songs. I always thought maybe he did, but it's highly likely that he didn't, because he would have said something by now if he did. And so, man, we got to stop doing that. Like Maybe our our talent. Music. Yes, Maybach Music. Why are we doing that? Why are we doing any of that? Uh, I'm not for the name myself. Uh, Remy Martin. Remy ain't paying you. You know, she ended up being Remy Ma, so I guess it works out. But yeah, at the same they time, sued, stop. they were like threatening her with lawsuits. They were going to sue her. She was infringing on their uh, copyright name. She, she would have made Remy pop, for real. Just like we just we just make a lot of songs and stuff like that about things that we like. You know, you don't hear like a, a Red Hot Chili Peppers doing that. Maroon Five ain't going out and being like, "Ooh, let's make a a song about Chardonnay." You know, they, they just ain't Marvin doing it because they know you got to get a check first. <laughs> but yeah, but that's yeah, just because, I mean, first. But you know, poor people want to be rich and rich people want to be poor. I mean, this is, this is how it goes, man. So, right. so I mean, you got, you got, you know, the, the art form. They don't want to be poor. They want to be cool. They want to be cool like poor people. Uh, well, they, but they, but they don't, <laughs> but they don't, they don't talk about the labels like that so much. I mean, the, the ones that already got it, they ain't got, they ain't talking about labels. That's why Maroon 5 ain't talking about, I'm sure they all got Bentleys if they, if they want them. Uh, but they ain't talking about that in their songs. Whereas in the, you know, the rap art form, it's, it, that's, that it's the opposite, right? They, they, you talk about, you know, the, the, the biggest car you got, talk about the Before G, the G5, it. all that stuff like that, man. It's just, it's just different, man. It's just a different yeah. mentality. And it's always going to be like yeah, that. Same gotta... thing. Yeah. Same okay. thing. I mean, now you see that really kind of, I don't know if it started in hip hop, but you know, we became familiar with it, with hip hop, but now you see that just in everyday culture, just the Instagram culture where people kind of do the same thing on Instagram, where you don't have to have a record to do that. You can just flex, stunt, floss, whatever you want to call it, on the gram. Now, you might be standing next to a Lamborghini just parked on the street, and you want to sit next to it, act like it's yours, or you want to you know, have these fake Gucci polo, whatever type of clothes, Balenciaga, and act like it's real. But like you said, everybody just wants to project like they're rich yeah. everybody wants to act like we got something yeah but go back to ryan's point like i mean i hear what you're saying like about you know like we got to stop you know you know the, the artists got to stop putting their you know other brands names and their music on their you know their, their labels all this stuff like that but i mean if the if the artists like that hadn't but that came before hadn't done that i mean you wouldn't see like you know how I mean like now like in, in marketing commercials I mean it's all hip hop hip hop hip hop's everywhere you know it's it's ubiquitous, but maybe if you didn't if you know like Nelly hadn't put that song out like that and probably moved hella units for Nike indirectly or if he had a contract or whatever they did, I mean you just it just it just showed you at that time like that's the power of hip hop you know like hey you know this this artist can go out here and put out a song where he's literally just you know thinking on the top of his brain and that that helps Nike's bottom line so that's where you get these. You know, big com- corporations. We already knew that, though. Yeah. We already knew that, though. I mean, Run DMC uh, made the shell toes hot, or who, whoever else was before them wearing yeah, shell toes. Yeah, but like it we, ain't, but it ain't always. We been already like have it. done it, so we should know. It, we should know now the power of of uh, of our culture. We should know, but like at that time in the well, I'll say like in the the, the Nelly era. I mean, like you. I mean, but that was like right when you started having like you know hip hop. 
people having their own like liquor brands and things like that. But now it's 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 a little bit wider now. You know, they got their own signature shoes, things like that. I mean, it's just it just opened a lot more doors. So I don't know, man. Like, it, right? What, Cardi got that Pepsi. Yeah, commercial. you know, I mean, it's, it's it's all things like this, man. Which is like, who? Yeah, I saw, I'm fine with that. Just don't make a Pepsi song first. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You get the contract first. Now, if you make the Air Force One song, take it to take it to uh, Nike and say, "Hey, we we made this song. Y'all interested? You know, maybe you can cut a deal with them." It's, there's ways there's ways to do it. I'm sure they'll be interested. Remember, but, McDonald's did that stupid thing where you get paid like a a dollar for every time you say Big Mac in a rap. Y'all remember that? Right. Yeah, <laughs> <that's> right. <laughs> it was lame. Though. I don't think nobody did it, but it was still fun. Yeah, and I feel like I don't have a problem with people mentioning labels because especially if you're an artist if you're creating whatever whether it's music whether it's tv shows whatever you're doing i expect that to be a reflection of your life so if you a jordan sneakerhead like if you just love jordans i don't mind you rapping about jordans i just wouldn't do it every song and like you said i wouldn't name my companies or my labels after them like that's the biggest thing to me or get tattoos of them because that stuff is lasting. If I want to make a song and talk about, hey, yo, I'm, I'm walking around in my J's, like, that's fine. But there are limits to it. We got guys now who are basically walking, My rap name talking, Jordan 11. Right, billboards. <laughs> like, you talking about Hennessy in every song, right. but you're not getting no money from it. Or you talking about Supreme in every song, but you're or not tattooing it on your leg, J.R. Smith. Right. If Ryan was a Definitely. rapper, his first song would be uh, the, the Croc Slipper. <laughs> That's <laughs> definitely what his rap name would be. <laughs> you can't rap about Crocs. <laughs> hey, if you if you yeah, fire, you can rap about shoes. anything, man. <laughs> right. Yo, know, I saw this. Uh, oh, I wish I had the name on here. I was scrolling through my phone on the gram, and I saw this lady rapping about math. And it was actually pretty uh, pretty catchy. So shout out to that lady. Yep. The culture. All right, so we kind of veered off a little bit, but right, right. let's get back to the racism. Let me bring y'all back to the to, yeah, to, back to this racism <laughs> before you get too happy and uplifted. <laughs> Don't feel empowered too soon. Uh, we got a Long Island uh, school district teacher, a uh, middle school teacher at that. Uh, she had in her classroom, she, I guess, was tasked with making a collage about coming back to school uh, for a uh, for Roosevelt Middle School, which they say is mostly minority, uh, both Latino and black. Um, and inside the pictures, if you look closely, they said it, there was a picture of two nooses with a saying labeled back to school necklaces, back to school necklaces, two nooses. Now, I don't know about y'all, but as usual, it's just one of those little things like, hey, I'm racist and I'm here. There's absolutely no reason for you to be putting nooses anywhere at the school. First of all, when was the last time? Nobody even talks about nooses unless it's hanging black people. I'm just saying. So I don't really know how she's going to get out of this one. How's how she going to get out of this one? Paul? I have no. So let me understand. Let me understand the facts. <laughs> I'm not I'm not I'm not signing up on none of this. But is it? He's the, like, Paul, <laughs> we know you have experience. <laughs> right. Two out white delegates. So, you as close as we so can this get. Is, hold on, let me, let me, but let me understand. So this is the teacher that, that did the nooses, or these are students in the class that did the nooses? The teacher. The teacher did. The teacher she did put the two nooses, nooses together. Because she did the collage. Uh-huh. Yep. And she put two nooses together in, a, in, a, in this collage and said, this is, what what'd you say, back to school? Back to school. Back to school necklaces. necklaces. Yo. Uh, yeah, I, I, I ain't, I, I ain't no way to defend that, man. <laughs> ain't got nothing for it. I got nothing, I got nothing, I got nothing but for that, man. And the school is mostly minority, huh? Interesting. Yep. Yep. It's, yep. it's almost What's like half black and half Latin. Uh, so there is no white uh, Hispanic. Hispanic. So who, what, what color is the teacher? Well, it says some. 45% black, 55 Latino. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not a math major, but that means there ain't many white people there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so what, what color was the teacher? Does it say? Mm, Does it say that in there? Do they even have a picture of her? Because of one picture. Uh... Do we really have to find that though? We no. kind of know, right? You know what? <laughs> no, 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 we know for a fact she's not black. <laughs> and then the crazy what, thing what is, what if the plot twist is she I'll is? Keep like keep right looking. next to the uh, nooses in that collage, it says "ha ha," like right next to it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that part. 
Yeah, well, so, I, I luckily, I think that teacher was what was it? Was she fired or was she suspended? Probably suspended, or probably suspended, probably suspended investigation. investigating. Yeah. They're investigating, of course. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's it's a lot of dog whistling, like you said. We unfortunately we're in a time where we see a lot of that, where you know there are code words, there are uh, little they hidden said images. Probably, they said it's probably it's probably just a joke. It probably has nothing to do with African Americans or anything, but at the same time, they can still draw that connection. <laughs> so, we're not sure. Right. That may not be what they're trying to say. Right. <laughs> Hash, and it says there's a hashtag yes right next to it also. Right next mm. to the nooses. So, yeah, she need to get on out of here, but like you said, all the, the racists are trying to come out and show themselves, so... I do, uh, I do agree with that. But all right, I was just curious what y'all thought about that. Uh, we're starting to get a lot of stories like that uh, here lately. Uh, every time we turn around, there's another, another secret message, or not even secret anymore. Right. So a blatant message. Over. Yep. And we were all wrong right. last week because that governor of Virginia, he's like, I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> he said he ain't quitting. But he thought he was going to be gone He said he can moonwalk. He's, he's like, hey, I can moonwalk, so there's no reason for me to be step <laughs> but back. Yo, did, if you couldn't moonwalk, I say step back. But yo, did you hear about that? I mean, we heard about the, the black dude that was after him. That's Now he's in a bunch of hot water. But then the, the, yep, the yep. third in line, like he said, he did blackface too. <laughs> Right, he said he did. I black saw that. Too. Yo, man. I asked my wife. I was like, "Do you think like all the parties where black people are not invited, are they just doing blackface? I, like, is this how it I'm works?" I'm pretty sure if he went to a, a frat party in in 1983, I think that's exactly what was happening. <laughs> right. I think there's no wow. other way to explain it, man. Pretty much, at least how, in how Virginia. Far, right. How far north does this go? Like, would you? I guess it's probably in Iowa. It's just all the all the predominantly white places. <laughs> this man said just, north and said just Iowa. Just go get some shoe polish. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty normal. Go to Maine, it'd still be happening, I'm sure. I'm, but I, I'm, but this is the right. South. I mean, like, okay. And then the, there was a dude that did it like uh, in Florida, like a couple weeks ago, or some old picture of him in Cat- Hurricane Katrina, with blackface on. You, did you hear that one? That was like the yeah. Secretary of State or yeah, whatever. I saw that. Yeah, anyway, just craziness, sure. man. My wife now. My wife just has messaged me and she said, uh, "Remember, uh, what's his name? Weird Al." Weird Al was able to some kind of way do uh, parodies about black people and still uh, not have blackface. He used his own face, and we still right. some kind of way. Well, this this what we need. Okay, this is what we need, black delegates. We need an official uh, who gets a pass on the on on former uses of blackface. So we've already talked about uh, Robert Downey Jr. Are we cool with this or no? Are we, are we let's let's make a ruling right now. Cool with Robert who? Downey Jr. in Tropic Thunder. I already saw. We already spoke yeah, on that. So, he's saying, so now, what about weird ass? That's, that's the best the only one. Pass. What about he gets that's a pass? The only pass you get if you're not black. Yeah, I think that's probably the only. The only. What about pass. Soul Man? What one. about Soul Man? But Soul Man was about that though. Does it get a pass? Does the, the does the homie from from Soul Man get a pass? James Earl Jones, Ray Don Chong, or yes. Movie? Okay, so we got yes because that that movie was about that. Okay, so Soul Man, Ray Donk, Soul Man, and uh, now I'd have to I'd have to go back and watch it as a grown man. Oh man, it's trash. That movie was at trash. The time, then. I didn't think it was racist. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you were I, trying to point out the you know how black people or minorities are treated, and you're kind of just using irony to point it out, like that's fine. That's the same thing with Tropic Thunder. But if you're just doing it trying to get laughs, no go. Yeah. Cause they got like a was it uh, who's the dude from the Tonight Show Jimmy Fallon he did it like on Saturday Night Live or something like that like back in the ni- eight nineties or two thousand yeah, Carl Malone and I remember watching that and I no that's Jimmy Kim- that's Jimmy Kimmel time. that's Jimmy Kimmel that did that one oh okay. so that Jimmy Kimmel yeah yeah he he would do a kid uh, a Carl Malone impersonation but yeah it was it was in blackface so it, yeah it's kind of wild man just like you don't you didn't so how and that wasn't that long how ago often, that was like, do, how often have have black people done whiteface. Uh, Eddie Murphy did did it back in the seventies on Saturday Night Live, which on a, which was a great skit. Did you ever see that one, the old Eddie Murphy skit? On not that I recall. I'll send it, I'll just send it to you. But yeah, he, he he basically dressed up as a white guy and rode around New York City okay. all day long, and that was like you know that was whatever seventy two or something like you know something like that, whatever that was eight or eighty, I guess I should say, something like that. But he, that's the earliest I can think of as a comedian that did it, and uh, I don't know he. The Wayans brothers, the for white sure. girls. For sure. oh, yeah. That's the only one I could think of, though, um, and that wouldn't fly nowadays. I don't know. I still, I still like I mean, that movie. I, mean, I still like that. The thing one of the is, best movies. One of the best comedies that, of all time. That was one of their best movies. That's for sure. 
<laughs> that movie was hilarious. That movie was, that movie was dope, yeah. It was still funny. The movie now. was funny. And those yeah. masks were horrid, but they, it was still good. Yeah, but it didn't matter because it was hilarious. Yep. I stand by that. But movie. There's, there's a huge distinction between quote unquote white face and black face because if you got on white face, if you're doing a few, you might say, ah, that's a bad form, but it hasn't been used to oppress the people. Like, Blackface that's goes true. back years, and that's how they depicted black folks with the huge eyes and the big lips. Like, even when people do white face, they basically just make their skin pale and make their hair blonde. Um, and you got to tape back your lips those... so you have no lips. That's what you got to do. Cause <laughs> that's, that's what I consider white face. <laughs> Can't have lips. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't want to say it's apples to apples because it's a little different because there's not the history there and there's not the discrimination behind yeah. it. Uh, to try to make black people look like these savages um, and all of that. So, All right, you hear that, Soul Man dude? Whoever you are that played in Soul Man, we're coming for you, man. <laughs> You're going to get it. <laughs> Stay off Twitter. I think he'd be all right. <laughs> we don't forgot about that movie anyway. All right. All right, let's roll into right. Cindy McCain. Yeah, let's roll into Cindy McCain might be the last white woman trying to do some good for the world. Mm-mm-mm. Okay, <laughs> you, you want me to set this one up real quick? Go All ahead. right, so this this story, people probably missed it, but Cindy McCain, a uh, former wife of uh, Senator John McCain, so she was in the Phoenix airport recently, saw a, a woman with a child, and I guess the child and the mother did not have the same skin tones as each other. And so the Cindy, you know, being the you know observant white lady that she is, wealthy white lady, you know, decided to take it upon herself to notify the authorities in the airport that, you know, there might be some human smuggling going on because that's always the reasonable reaction you would have anytime you see a, a child of one hue with a parent of an, or an adult of another hue, you know, in a, in a very busy airport. That's, that's always your first instinct. So she, she tells the police and, uh, and then she goes on a radio show and she talks about it. She kind of, she kind of, you know, pats herself on the back, says, I was in the airport and I saw, I saw human trafficking going on. And so, of course, you know, later on, some local reporters kind of went to the police and said, you know, oh, you, this, this happened. Y'all catch some human trafficking going on at the airport and stuff like that. Cindy McCain, stop it. That's a, that's a great story. And this, the, the local Phoenix police, uh, you know, turned around and said, no, nah, that wasn't the case. So, yeah, just a, just a weird story, man. One problematic. I, I wanted to get y'all's thoughts. You know, did, did, what, do you think she was justified in at least saying something because she thought something looked weird? Or, or what, what do you think she's going on here? I, mean, I, I am going to say, sorry, Ish. No, go ahead. Uh, I'm going to say that in this situation, I think it, I think it's okay. What? Um, I don't think we have enough information to McCain say that she's co-sign. being a bad person. I'm not saying she's trying to be a bad person, but in those situations, if you feel, if you truly feel that that's what's going on, you do have to report it, man. It, it no, it's not going to turn out for you, uh, f- turn out well if you if you're wrong. You can never accuse somebody of kidnapping and then think that everything's going to be okay afterwards if you're wrong, you know. But if you if you see something like that and you think that's what it is, you do have to say something. So it didn't work out for her. It didn't work out. But had she had she saved somebody, we'd be talking about she's a hero right now. It's I don't been- know. I feel like if you have that concern, like you need to do, you need to figure out whether it's justified before you go calling the police. Or you do before that? you try to get authorities, like even if you go up to Thank the people you. and just ask. Excuse me, ma'am. Or ha- did you did you kidnap this little, no, little child just say, and hey, taking it for know, human trafficking? Hey, this is this is a beautiful child. You know, what's your name or you know whatever. Oh, is this this your mom and dad? I I think I've seen people do that before, where somebody will come up to the kid like, hey, is this your mom or dad or whatever. But I think I don't know. Just assuming because somebody. Some, a kid is a different color, just calling the police on them. Again, we talk about what happens with minorities when they get the cops called on them. So what if this is a black lady with a white kid, and then they call the cops, and then the black lady gets shot because of this assumption uh, where you didn't have anything else to go on except that these people are different races. And I'll tell you a story that was is kind of interesting. So... One of my best friends was adopted. It's a black dude was adopted by a white family. And I actually 
did a lot of traveling with him and his family. Uh, his family initially was from Wisconsin, so we would go up to Wisconsin to visit his grandparents. I would roll with him. And one time we went to Canada. We went to Niagara Falls. And I, I was rolling with them, so it was me and him, two black dudes, and then everybody else is white. So parents and, what, two other siblings at the time, they were white. And um, so we get to the Canadian border, and my mother had to, like, write a letter saying that it was okay for me to go across the border with them or whatever. So we get to the border, and they're checking the passports of the adults, and they're looking in the back of the van. And they're like, okay, you know, are these your kids? And they said, you know, the mother looked at me and was like, oh, well, he's not ours. He's, you know, a friend of my son and yada, yada. So they gave the people the letter. They looked at it, and they're like, okay, this looks good. And they're like, Oh, is is he the only one that's not your son? <laughs> and they like looking at my partner, and they're like, "Nope, everybody else is ours." And the you know the border patrol, you could just tell he just wasn't comfortable with it because you got this other black kid with a white family. But again, he was adopted, so it's just like if they would have tried to jump into some action and tried to take him away or tried to do something, just because they're making this assumption. So you got you got to be careful with stuff like that. All I'll say is, hey, if I'm walking around with my kid in the airport, don't come ask me no questions. If I'm walking my kid, like, hey, what are you doing? Are you the father? Because, look, I will, I'm will. i going to cuss you out. Uh, yeah. Has, did the bad man touch you? Did the bad man touch you? Like, that, you can't yeah. come up with somebody and say but look, something, look. man. Like, that, this kind of stuff, these kind of stories and the backlash that they get are part of the problem as far as moving or helping people who are actually in situations. Yeah, like and look, this. my wife, like my wife. But, I'm sure it was more than just the color of, of their yeah. skin. There had to be some kind of a, a behavioral kind of thing. I don't maybe. think so. I don't know about that. And and think I mean, about we, this, Paul. Answer answer me this. So would you rather have a person, maybe not even ask you directly, but a person kind of ask you or your child something to try to feel out if you or what you say or would you rather the police accost you and be like yo I need ID I need proof that that child is yours like which interaction would you rather have yeah either one because either one is going to get it <laughs> that's all I'm going to say <laughs> either one is going to get smoke from me if you come here and ask him about my kid and especially my wife look don't ask my wife that because she's a little sensitive about that because because my kid is real pale compared to her so I mean they that you you can see the similarity but they don't they they don't have the same skin tone and so it is a little confusing for people when they see my wife with my kid. And so she will, she, look, she'll, she'll be the first one to throw the haymaker. I'll be the one trying to pull her off you. So whoever you are out there and want to ask that question, go ahead and do it. And you're going to get popped aside your head by the wife and I can't stop her. The one way you can tell whether or not uh, this, something like this is going on, whether or not there are some shenanigans going on, look at the parents. Look at the people pretending to be the parents. Do they look tired? Do they look like they're about to, look like they about, to about to scream? <laughs> then that's their parents. And <laughs> you ain't gonna worry and about look, it because I be I be want to leave my kids sometimes. Like I'm just gonna leave you here, and I'm leaving. Like I'll come back and get or, you. Later. Look, man, I got. But, uh, and, and plus, so I got you know, the permanent. You know, as they, I got the permanent resting. You know, resting bitch face all the time. So I always got the angry scowl on my face. So like nobody really wants to approach <laughs> me anyway. You know, they want to leave me alone. So so I, 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 nobody wants it with me on this. No, leave me alone. <laughs> That's definitely my kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, say, just, I say, man, do do what you do what you feel is right. I'm gonna go with most people are trying to be good people. You know, if if you get it wrong, you get it wrong. I guess. Give him Cindy McCain the pass. I see how the black delics are rolling today. Wow. Okay, okay, I see wow. you. On Black History Month of all months, the okay. Black Ryan. Don't put that on the Black Delta. The Black Ryan. <laughs> the Black Ryan. Yeah. Right the blackest right Ryan. The Black Ryan is it. the only one that's against uh, human trafficking. All right, man. So let's 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 end this, Cindy McCain. Let's roll on to the next topic, man. You want to leave this one off? Next. Ish? Are we gonna talk about that? Or are we gonna skip? No, no I, I got I got something for this. I I, I prepared, man. Okay, I'm ready right. to go. So, let so you, let ask me go. first. All right. So the delegates had a question today. Uh, this is Ishmael's question. What products do you think failed because it was a little too ahead of its time? A little too ahead of its time. Uh, so, Paul, I'm going to start you off since you said you got some. I got it. Ready Ishmael, to go. did you actually think of anything? Ishmael could be thinking, I'm be thinking while you're going. Go ahead. Look, man, this is, this is the invention I think that was too far ahead of its time. And this is kind of going back, kind of the topic we were t- before we got on the call, we were talking about kind of kicking this around. And we're talking about the TurboGrafx-16, so this is kind of like a gaming invention. But do y'all remember when we were kids, 
the greatest thing of all time that we all saw on the commercial like twice, but we never ever actually saw in person, the Power Glove, the Nintendo Power Glove. Do y'all remember that? Right. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I do. I used it looked like the. It looked like like it looked like a like a. 2042 version of the of the Infinity Gauntlet glove that Thanos has, <laughs> right? Yeah. And yo, man, right. I, yeah. I remember when this thing came out, and I never actually saw in a person, but you would always hear, you know, it was like it was like, you know, it, it, there was no internet back then, but back then you would hear like, oh man, I know, I know a cousin of a friend <laughs> of a nephew right. that right. lives lives three towns over. They got one. How can we right. be be cool with that dude so we can go over to his house and play that and get that and play that thing? And that's how it was, man. You never actually, I never saw one in person. I, I still don't even know if they really never. exist. Right. Never. I wonder if they ever never. made it. But right. look, it was, I I never it. Saw but it was in like the little brochure <laughs> you would get the Nintendo games. You know, you open up the little I book. I just had Nintendo Power. I just had Nintendo right. Power. And it'd be, and in the, and it'd be a, like a whole full page ad with a kid and it'd be like a, like a lightning bolt on it, yo. And it had all the little buttons on yeah. it. And you'd be like, oh man, I just need that Infinity Gauntlet glove. And I feel like now, if that glove came out today with any games or like some virtual reality stuff, Fam, do you know what I could do with that thing? Let's not even get to the virtual reality porn. Let's not even get to the virtual reality porn. <laughs> I, was gonna say, like, I'm I'm like, to I know exactly what, you what you're going to do with the right. power glove, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but fam, if you got like a Marvel, like, can you imagine like, okay, they have like a new Marvel game and you play as Thanos. What, what, do you, what if you could play as Thanos in a Marvel game and you got an Infinity What's Gauntlet power glove? Your fingers, man? And you can put the no. little jewels in it? When you, fam, come on. The actual reality of it is that invention was stupid and that's why it didn't catch on. What? It sounded a lot cooler than it actually was, but it wasn't because you now had where you would normally control something with two hands, you now have one because you got to hold the other arm up to use the D-pad on your wrist. It was dumb, man. Man, it, it, it wouldn't it work. Ma- but, and that's why that, it didn't the, work. The technology wasn't quite there but now today you could have that you could have like an apple watch into it you know integrate you could have all this stuff man you could do all that you could, i would just walk around with one man. i'd be like michael jackson with the, with the sequin glove i just walk don't around all day long started. don't get me started on the apple watch don't get me started fam it'd be dope you could, the technology is there what's now what's wrong with the apple watch what's wrong with the all apple right, watch? let's talk let's talk right. about if this gucci apple watch. made a power i'm, I'm gonna glove, go to opposite if gucci made an apple cosine <laughs> power glove every black person in america would have it you know it ryan come on right well, Blackface or not? <laughs> much. So I'm gonna talk about uh, uh, something that came out uh, a little after its time. The Apple Watch. It was cool when Dick Tracy had it because he was in the '60s <laughs> and he was dealing with old people stuff. He had old cars and they didn't have cell phones. So oh yeah, I can listen to my phone on my wrist. That was real cool. But now it's stupid. I have a watch. I have a phone in my pocket. I already have a phone. There's no point in me looking at my wrist. The screen is too small. Stupid. Talking into my wrist. Stupid. Checking text messages on a two inch by two inch screen. Stupid. The Apple Watch is is uh, came out way too late. It should have been that should have been out maybe 20, 30, 40 even years ago. It's dumb. I'm gonna disagree with you, and I'm not going to. See, one of my pet peeves is when people talk about. So you're talking about really smart watches in general. But everybody uses Apple, you know, yeah. as everything. But I don't think smart watches are bad. Matter of fact, I got a smart watch on my wrist right now that I got for what did I get this for? Christmas, I believe, from the wife. And I had one a couple yeah, of years you better, ago. You better say you like it. You better say you oh, like no. it. Oh no, no, she got it because she knew that I liked it. Because I had a smart watch some years ago, and it eventually broke, and I never got another one because I was just waiting to find the right one. So. As a smart watch person, I think they're incredibly um, beneficial to you. They make things a lot more convenient. Like you talked about, you have a phone in your pocket. You don't need to pull that phone out of your pocket all the time. Or women may have a, a their phone in their purse. You don't need to dig for your purse every time. You get a text message, you look at your wrist, you see what it is, boom. Now, I'm not a big fan of talking in my watch like my watch has that ability i did it just to see if i could do it and it was cool but i'm not going to be doing that every day but again if your phone is somewhere where you can't get to it or if you're at work you left your phone at your desk and you had to walk across the office to get something else then you have that information right there at you you don't have to unlock your phone. phone on you you don't need it just wait 
wait till you get to your desk. <laughs> I, I like the convenience of the of the smartwatch. The one thing I will say is though, like I the socially awkward side of me, like I like having the phone so I can always pull the phone out and just look at that instead of actually having to talk to another human being. So I, with the with the watch, I wouldn't be able to do that. So I. I don't want that for that for you, reason you would alone. you would be able to do it with your regular phone by looking at the screen and putting the phone down. No, I don't want to do that Same either. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just want to zone out and not. That's talk what to I'm you. saying. It's just it's just it's just an extra piece of hardware that you just don't need yeah. that you already have. But yeah. anyway, but Ishmael, the thing is, your... is if you already have one. So if you're gonna wear a watch anyway, which most people I don't know most people, but I a lot of people my... wear watches. I'm a person. I'm gonna wear a watch regardless. If I don't, when I didn't have a smartwatch, I still got a case of watches. Uh, probably got 10, 12 watches, something like that. Look at that. this dude. So, I got one watch, and it's cheap as. <laughs> look at this dude. <laughs> <laughs> new car, new I'm mattress. Look at look at Ish living out here, living his best life. We, me and Ryan, no, just struggling man, with all these we, these children, these bad kids. Look at this. It's mostly <laughs> gifts. Right. It's mostly gifts, you know, over the years. You, so you get watches. When we gifts, when we I ain't got no gifts. Look, look, I have to, look, I have to, I'd have to save up like the last 15 years worth of gift cards I've gotten just to buy one watch, man. What are the gifts? Yeah, what right. are you getting gifts for? I get $5 McDonald cards. Word, at man. The most. Hey. <laughs> but as I was saying, if you're going to wear a watch anyway, why not, in addition to telling that time, why not get that text message? Why not get that reminder that you got this appointment at one o'clock? Why not get, you know, whatever? <laughs> so it's just taking phones are getting bigger, and phones you got to unlock them. I don't have, I don't do the face unlock, so I got to put my fingerprint on the phone. It's more convenient if I'm in a rush. Just look, look at, at the watch. Look at, listen to that flex. Don't get me started on. No, don't get me started on facial recognition. Don't get me started on facial recognition. I can do one about that too. Hey. What happens if you get beat up? <laughs> what happens if you're in a car accident? What happens if, I'm, having, if I'm just it happen to be? What happens if you have an allergic reaction to some shrimp? Your phone won't open. What up. happens if I'm wearing black? You can't even call now. What, what happens then? Yeah. What if you wear blackface, white people? <laughs> your phone won't open up. Now you gotta wash your makeup <laughs> off. You gotta come out the KKK rally. That, too the much. Phone work. says like I do not recognize the size of your lips. <laughs> it can't be. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that that is a that is a for real occurrence. Like, if yeah. your uh, appearance changes at all, it might not work. But of course, if you do the face unlock, they make you put in a pin number. So now you just have to dial in the pin number until your face shrinks back down to its normal size. <laughs> again, it should it, again, again it should flex on us because I don't even have my my iPhone doesn't even have the face recognition on it. Yes, so that's how advanced. That's how into 2019 he is. I'm living in 2012 with my. Hey, I told you, I don't do it. I don't use it. But you have it. I just know about it. Okay, but you have it. Well, I don't have an iPhone, so, but my phone does have, it does have face unlock feature, but no, I just use a fingerprint, man. That's all going to the government anyway. I just just want you to know that. Thank you. I, I, I know everything about you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> there <laughs> all right. you go. Let's, let's finish up this last topic. We, we, we close it on did, we, did you actually have, oh, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. have one, though, Ish? Yeah, well, I had to. I won't belabor them because we, you know, we went out for That's a little cool, bit. Man. We Number one, I feel like the electric car is an obvious one. You know, now yeah, they're making definitely. a comeback with Tesla and these other uh, competitors that they have and starting to get steam. And even, even like GM and Ford and all the big car companies, now they have these electric vehicles or hybrid vehicles, like plug-in hybrids also. But General Motors... Came out with the EV1 back in when was it? That was like 1990 Long something. It was but it was but uh, ugly. But oh, it, it was, was ugly. Crap. Yeah, it, it, it was. Crap. Oh yeah, it was terrible. And matter of fact, I mean, real talk. Up until what, maybe three years ago, like when Tesla really came to the market, all electric vehicles were trash as far as visually. Yeah. Um, the, and I the don't. Prius was that's okay. something I never it understood. Okay. It great, no, the Prius is trash. Because it was just the battery size. Like, the batteries were too big, so they couldn't. And they had to make them aerodynamic. So, you know, no. they couldn't do both. There's no reason that you had to make electric vehicles look as weird as electric they had vehicles. To. No, they didn't have to. <laughs> Why is Tesla able to make an electric vehicles? Because now the batteries are light enough where they can make it in a regular car. No. Size. I'd rather. Look, if you got to make cars that look like either the EV1 or even the Prius to have an electric vehicle, just make me a pickup truck. 
if you need more space, just give me right. a big old truck with a bed. And it'll be too heavy. No, man. The Volt was like, the, the, the Volt was more okay, power. It, like it, didn't, it didn't sell like that. In fact, yeah. they stopped making it, I think, just, just recently. Yeah, mm-hmm. the new Volt, the most recent ones look better. Those actually look like regular cars. Yeah, they were cool. But they did, they still did, and couldn't get no. Sales. They were kind of hatchback looking. Yeah. They had a hatchback kind of thing going, but other than that, they were cool. Right, so what's the other one? Yeah, but, uh, what you got, man? The, of course, the well, the the EV one, you know, that went down because Big Oil basically bought yep. the patents, uh, made it so they couldn't sell it. So that went away for like twenty years until it came back. The other one's actually a TV show, Ryan. I know you watched the show. Uh, mm. Matter of fact, you might have put me onto the show, but the show Jericho. That That's a fact, on, dog. That's one of my favorites, man. It was like it, it was, was almost cold. like a zombie apocalypse story without oh, the zombies. Without it was one zombies. of those post-apocalyptic stories. Yep. Before you had all the Walking Dead and all these TV shows and movies talking about like the end of the world, and that mode was dope. It only two lasted and a two half seasons. Glorious seasons. Yeah, it lasted Ooh. two seasons, but. Paul, if you haven't seen it, I never heard, I I never heard of it. Netflix. Who was in it? Go back and find it. It's called Jericho. It's on, it's on Netflix, I think. Yeah, I think it's still on Netflix. It's but got your man Lenny done. James on it. Yeah. So those that watch Walking Dead, Lenny James on there. That's the black dude, the uh, samurai peace peace man. <laughs> he uh, he was on there. Uh, dang, who was that white dude that was on there? I don't know what he's from. Uh, you'll know him if you saw him, people. So, but yeah, Jericho was dope. It was just like a like a nuclear disaster happens. Right. And so every this one little town of Jericho is cut off from the rest of the world. And so it starts there. But yeah. great show. One of my favorites of all time. I cannot believe that it was canceled. Yep. Nobody was watching it. It's too early. If it came out five years later, that might probably yeah. be in season 15 right now. I've Flex. legit never even Flex. heard of this before, but okay. And they had finally got to, like, really figuring out, like, what was going on when it went off. Right. Which just made me. Maybe upset. Right. They figured out it was canceled, and they had to like cut that mug real quick. Yeah, <laughs> put together a little last episode. I, I'm, yeah. Since, since we're talking, I TV think they shows, campaigned for like a last six episodes or something because it wasn't gonna come out, but they campaigned for them to release it or something. So I think it was like two and two episodes, right. two seasons and six episodes. Or something yo, like yo, that. Netflix! Something if you're weird. listening to the show, I know the Netflix executives love to listen to the Black Delegates podcast. <laughs> Go ahead, throw some money. At Jericho, man, bring it back. It's perfect for Netflix. Go and bring that show back. Right, right. And, yeah. and I guess this is a good time to reach out to the listeners. We haven't done that yet. Listeners, do you got something, an invention, a TV show, something that you feel like was before its time that you feel like didn't get the shine that it deserved? If so, hit us up. You can send us an email at theblackdelegatespod at gmail.com or hit us up on our social media platforms at Black Delegates as an underscore between Black and Delegates. So definitely want to get some listener feedback. Paul, what were you about to say? No, I was going to say, are we talking about TV shows? Uh, underrated TV show that only lasted for like five episodes. TV Funhouse. If you can ever find it, <laughs> YouTube. Five episodes. Like TV Fun, yo. TV Funhouse. TV Funhouse. It's, yeah. No, it yeah. Was what it was, man, it was, like, it was like puppets doing the weirdest things, unspeakable things. I remember. Yo, it was dope. It yeah. was like five episodes. It was the weirdest, trippiest show ever. I think they. I think somebody finally. Accom- they tried it in the movie and it was trash. <laughs> it, it, it didn't work. No, out. no, it was dope, man. It was. That, it was like those five episodes, man. It was crazy. Like it was like puppets doing cocaine, all kinds of things. That was like the weirdest thing in the <laughs> it world. Sound like man. Welcome, welcome to Happy Town. It didn't work out, man. Did you see that? No, movie? I didn't see Welcome to Happy Town. But this TV Funhouse, great show. If it's ever, yo, ish, you, I'm gonna send you a YouTube with this. You, you're gonna like it. I guarantee you. Ish probably puppets won't. Puppets and cocaine. All right. Right, yes. It sounds great. <laughs> sounds perfect. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like what I've been waiting for my whole life. Yeah, so for the other, so Paul, for the other people who, who don't want to watch Muppets snort cocaine, uh, where, what can they do? Can, where can they can, uh, how can they rate or review the show? They can get on their local uh, or whatever you know podcast after using. Uh, I guess if it's Spotify. Are we on Spotify, I guess? I don't know. Are we on Spotify? Yeah, we on Spotify, yep. G. Nobody Spotify, ever listens to it on there, Apple, but we on Spotify. Podcast, yeah, Apple whatever you on. Apple. We, re- we waiting on the listeners. Yep. Go on there, rate us and review us, and tell a friend, man. That's what, you to, what we want you to do. Four stars, five stars. I take three at this point. <laughs> three. Hey, but is three. We, we done with topics, or are we gonna we going to do the last one? No, we done with topics. Oh, damn. <laughs> <Cut it off. laughs> Shutting it off. Down. All right. Uh, uh, learn learn say, when, to, when to say it's too much. Right. Say that for next week. We'll bring that back next week. Okay. Okay. Yep. 
And I got right, so I also got some next week. I tease it a little bit. I was gonna do it this week, but we'll wait. I got another project. I told you about the the uh, diet that I'm working on, but I got something else that I'm working on too. Trying to find a signature something. So uh, we'll we'll get to that next week. So make sure you come back so you can hear what else I got cooking up. Yep. Leave them on a cliffhanger. That's yep. how we do. That's what we do. All right. So with that being said, see y'all next week. Peace. Peace. Peace.